Thank you, Katie, and thank you, uh, Alex, uh, for doing all the work uh, to, make this, to make this possible. I passed the buck to them after NSF showed interest, and they would just be fantastic. So there are four motivations for this workshop. Uh, so one is, I was a latecomer to this, but to see the effect of reporting regulations in the medical sciences. Uh, second, the incomplete progress at BITS. Uh, uh, maybe that's said in a negative way, but uh, I think it's, <laughs> we're trying to be positive about it. Uh, third, experiences of no results at our immigration policy lab and our attempt uh, to, uh, to figure out what to do with them, those results. And finally, encouragement from NSF to seek institutional remedies. So let me go through these. Uh, when I saw this graph uh, sent around our lab about a, uh, about a year ago, uh, it was stunning to me. Uh, that year 2000, on, uh, going down uh, uh, vertical line, is the year uh, when uh, registration of primary outcomes was required at clinicaltrials.gov, uh, which some of you know a good deal. And although this has been an imperfect, uh, uh, an imperfect uh, uh, system, uh, th there are ways to get around it. Uh, two things are remarkable. Uh, one, the number of uh, the number of significant results showing the success uh, of the pharmaceutical and dietary supplement interventions. Uh, the percentage of uh, successes went markably down. Um, uh, the, uh, those are the plus signs there. Uh, and second, the average effect uh, of these was much more, much more negative. Uh, and this from a, a simple relatively simple innovation, uh, which wasn't fully legally enforced, uh, you still got uh, a tremendous shift uh, in the average uh, report uh, in, um, uh, in the studies. And, uh, and although this has been said in the psychology and social, other social sciences that we were reporting non-results, uh, the effect of a relatively uh, minor intervention uh, had an enormous impact uh, on the reported results. And obviously, we all asked ourselves, why don't we have it here? Uh, second was the incomplete success at BITS. I think when BITS began, uh, uh, I, I guess I was amazed at how fast uh, some changes were normalized in at least the political science discipline and also economics. First of all, for people doing uh, exper experimental research, uh, normalization of uh, pre-analysis plans uh, became a norm, uh, and now it's almost impossible to produce, uh, to publish in uh, political science or economics journals any experimental research that hasn't had the registered uh, PAP, and this only started a few years ago. So a remarkable change in the norms of, uh, of social science, and largely attributable to actions uh, in BITS and open science. Uh, second, uh, strong replication norms for published research. When I was some time ago, maybe 20 years ago, uh, president of the comparative politics section uh, of the American Political Science Association, uh, there was under Gary King's uh, initiative uh, 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 a proposal that we put a replication footnote uh, for every published article that uses, uh, that uses quantitative data. Uh, and, uh, and this was uh, supposedly a letter from us at the comparative politics uh, uh, section of the APSA uh, that we write to all journals that published our research. And there was a whole coterie of people senior to me then uh, in that room uh, that, uh, that spoke against this norm uh, and argued that this would, be, uh, this would be a violation of their rights to have their own data. Uh, and this... <laughs> I was the loser, even though the president of the, of the, of the section, but it shows what a remarkable change there's been uh, that a uh, position like that cannot be credibly held uh, anywhere in, uh, in the social sciences today. Uh, third, uh, there's a, a monitoring system for p-hacking and other delicts. Uh, I just got an email from uh, open Science uh, asking me uh, f uh, my, my, an article I published two years ago in the APSR was chosen uh, uh, to be replicated and would I send all materials and all uh, the do files. And I wrote back saying, 
I'm so I'm delighted I'm delighted to see this, uh, and uh, this is a great service uh, to our discipline. And again, bits played a big role uh, in this, and 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 uh, it's exciting development. It's been a moderate success in data sharing norms, um, and uh, uh, I don't know too much about. Uh, the results here, uh, but of course, uh, people who've collected a lot of data have some right to hold it for a time, uh, but what that proper time is and how it, and, and how and when it ought to be shared is still an open question. However, there's no clear guidance at all on the reporting of null results and how it should be done. In the first uh, BITS meeting, we discussed some about this, and we couldn't get a consensus of where it should be done. The incentives seem all wrong. Hey, Ed, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, so uh, this is something uh, that, uh, 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 that was the third motivation, uh, the incomplete success uh, of uh, the reporting of no results uh, uh, through the BITS initiative. Uh, finally, in Stanford's Immigration Policy Lab, we try to espouse what I've been calling wet science norms. I don't want to call it life sciences because, or hard sciences because we do both life and hard. Uh, so we published evidence of nudges that worked. And we were very proud that some of our nudges worked to get people to apply for citizenship, to be specific. Uh, but some of our nudges failed. And we had a hard time getting any journal to publish Failed, <laughs> failed nudges because why should they be interested in something that didn't work? Uh, every, anyone would have known something so light wouldn't have worked. And even embedded in a paper with other significant findings, nature and human behavior would not let us interpret null results. They said, and I think properly so, we didn't have a PAP to sort out the proper explanations for the null results. And if, unless you build in a PAP for uh, the conditions under which you get no results, they didn't want to publish it. Uh, so this was a conundrum for us. Of we wanted to, to be honest about the fact that many of our uh, treatments uh, in the policy realm uh, did, not have, did not have any uh, 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 significant results, but we didn't know how to advertise it. Survey experiment in Jordan trying to change local attitudes towards Syrian refugees faced the same uh, uh, problem. No results for several treatments, uh, but this team, uh, working on it, advanced a model for reporting, and that will be the second presentation today uh, on the model that they developed. I was so encouraged by that model when they first uh, produced it uh, in a lab meeting that I went straight to the uh, Social Behavioral and Economics Division of the National Science Foundation to say, we need to think this through because there are possible remedies. I went to the NSF and interviewed with Alan Tompkins, the Deputy Director of the SBE at the NSF. I asked, is there a way to build into the NSF proposal not only publications from previous grants, uh, which is required in any NSF uh, 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 grant, but evidence that all promised models of the PAP were made available to the scientific community of the past research? This would be a major change in what they ask you in your NSF proposal. He answered, we love this idea, but we're too bureaucratic to do this by ourselves. However, he encouraged me to run a workshop on his budget that would put pressure on the NSF to reform. Community pressure is a strategy for federal agencies to act. Uh, and uh, so promising, pr promising me money if we wrote a simple five-page proposal uh, uh, and said this will become a way that you can put pressure on us uh, was my fourth motivation. And with the help of the BIT staff, especially as I mentioned Katie and Alex, we put together a successful proposal. The proposal was really terrific. I, uh, I, uh, I can claim <laughs> no credit for having written it. Uh, the challenge, analyzing the units in the scientific ecosystem, at which points we intervene to, to induce reform in a minimally intrusive way. And so I tried to list the units of the ecosystem. And I hope this graph that Katie put together, which is a more uh, visual uh, presentation of what I have here listed, will become a kind of the leitmotif of our discussions throughout the day. Because there are many places where we or the scientific community can intervene in this ecosystem. First, the investigator at time one writes a proposal with a pre-analysis plan. 
So could it be in the pre-analysis plan what to do with no results uh, and how no results will be treated? Second stage, this is the legal and ethical oversight, the IRBs, and registration with such agencies as clinicaltrials.gov. That's the second, you might say, stage of where, uh, where an intervention is possible or a legal or norm intervention is possible. Third is that the NSF, NIH, and other granting agencies, reviewers and panels evaluating research plans. Is this the point uh, where demands uh, for uh, plans for reporting no results uh, can be, uh, in a sense, uh, 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 demanded? Fourth is journals. Editors and peer reviewers evaluate submissions and is at the journal stage, the editorial stage, uh, where we deal with issues of no results. Years ago, I proposed that one, one issue of every four of the American Political Science Review be called the quarterly issue of no results and replications. And uh, that fell like a lead balloon. Uh, uh, but uh, it may be that the journals are the places which reserve spaces for this uh, might be an inducement uh, for scholars to then spend the time to write up properly the no results rather than putting them into file drawers. Uh, finally, the investigator again at T2, if it's not published, does she archive the no, no results, uh, the non-results? Uh, what is her obligation uh, for, uh, 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 for uh, reporting or, uh, or making available uh, non-results uh, that are not in her file drawer? Uh, should she share data with the research community to allow them to see the no results with the due files uh, uh, around with explanations that, uh, of why, uh, of what the models were, uh, to say other researchers could see that this uh, um, intervention was not a success in changing outcomes. For continuing or new grant support, report on results of previous sponsored research. That would be, again, at the, uh, at the granting agency panel. They would look at uh, the past research to see if, in fact, all specified models uh, had was reported in some way or archived. Finally, the research community. Meta-analyses or other, what, what Katie has here is reuse, uh, meta-analysis relying on published and archived reports and raw data. Is this the point where the null results uh, should, uh, should be uh, collected and reproduced. So, today's plan of action. First, we'll hear the IPL proposal of Scott Williamson and Jeremy Weinstein and Ala Arabaha, uh, uh, and uh, Scott will be producing it. Uh, and this will be, in a sense, one proposal that was motivating, as I mentioned before. Second, we'll have uh, panels on the units in the ecosystem with general questions. And we're going to ask all of the panels to tell the whole group in their point in the ecosystem what's happening, how effective is it, what improvements are under development, and what challenges can't the approach address on its own. So these will be in, uh, uh, one hour sessions on uh, several of the units in this ecosystem. Then we will move in the afternoon to breakout sessions with small groups we will confer on suggested reforms and report back to the workshop as a whole. And finally, hopefully, we'll have a document will be this outside pressure onto the, uh, uh, onto the federal agencies of what we think the best plan would be to ensure uh, that the scientific community has access to what's today put in the file drawer. Thank you very much.